Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we'll be doing my September wrap up. Let's go. So, I think I did a pretty good job of reading this month. I, as I said before, I didn't really complete any of my TME R, but that's okay. I did have my libraries and books, and that was what I was kind of focusing on. And, did you notice anything different? <laughs> you know what time it is. All that exciting stuff is coming, but... Let's get on with the video. So the first one was The Vine Witch by Luann G. Smith. For centuries, the vineyards of Chateau de Nord have depended on the talent of the vine witches, whose spell help, help create the world renowned wine of the Ch Chinooks Valley. Then the skill of dividing harvest fell into beauty with Sarsalade, Elena Bonanu, was blindsided by a curse. Now, after breaking the spell, but confined her to the shadows of marshland and weakened her magic, Elena is struggling to, re to return to her former life. And the Vanya and what she was destined to inherit for Islam in the possession of a handsome stranger. Anyways, I gave this story uh, 3.5 to 4 stars. That wasn't bad. I think the book did start out slow. I did like the whole vine business, which I thought was cool. I did like the first half of the book which was interesting and entertaining but the other half was not so great. The other half was really torturous and it was just really so slow so I'm not, not sure, quite sure what happened between the pacing between there so. I also didn't really like the romance between the two main characters like Jean and Elena. I could not feel anything between them. Um, as well as I didn't really understand the motives behind the main villain's character as well like and why did also like why did no one look at the lockdown when the property was bought so I also had a few questions because the chateau was bought and then because the chateau was bought and I have a few questions such as why did no one look at the locked door when the property was bought. And so that was kind of the one thing I shouldn't have been touched upon. I'm, I was just curious as to why. But also, uh, connecting magic with science is okay, but it, there needs to be a connection between the two as to why. The characters were also annoying and the plot was fast paced with everything being wrapped up maybe a little bit too neatly. Also, why is the female main character not French? Like, Elena is Spanish, isn't it? Cause, like, I don't know about the parents' names. I totally forget what the parents' name is, but... I'm pretty sure Elena is, is Spanish, no? So that's kind of confusing, so... It's not just since everything is all in a French setting, so... It only makes sense that the main character is French. Unless, of course, one parent was Spanish, and then that's why, but, yeah, that was just a little out of the place. So, yeah, it wasn't too bad of a bug, but it could have been a little bit better, and maybe ease of the info dump things at the end. Oh my god, that kind of killed the mood. So, the book was pretty much torturous to read. So, I actually wanted to give up, like, maybe on the second half of the book, because it was just so slow, but... That's on me, so whatever. <laughs> My next book is What Monsters Gods by Rosamund Hodge. Centuries ago, the heretic sons of Reuben raised a deadly briar around Monarchia's palace, casting the royal family into enchanted sleep and silencing the kingdom's gods. Born with a miraculous gift, Leah's destiny is to kill Reuben and make the royals, but when she succeeds, she finds her duty is not yet complete. For now, she must marry into the royal family and forge a pact with the god or die. To make matters even worse, Reuben's spirit is haunting her. Oh, I just realized something because, oh my god, I should have read this more carefully. Just because I was so confused about what Reuben is. This makes sense now. I, sometimes I skim that summary of the book, so that's on me. <laughs> so I think I gave this originally a 3 stars, I believe, but um, I kind of ranted a little bit, so. I have reduced it to a two star. Here's why. Everything seems to be repetitive. It honestly was. They're like, oh, what are you going to do about this now? And so on and so forth. So, they all ask the same questions, such as if Leah believes in me and Anna. And so, we, like, and she keeps saying that she is. That's also repetitive of how Leah saying she's not worthy. 
which is honestly so annoying when they've done that. It was not necessary. Um, I'm not really quite sure if I understood Leah and her relationship with monstrous gods when Lillian got killed and then woke up after 500 years of sleeping. There were ha, ha, like, weren't there any consequences to suffer? They literally slept for 500 years. How come there's no, I don't know, like any consequences because of it? I don't know. And also, they keep saying oh, how much has changed over the course of 500 years, but we never got to see it. So, like, how are we to know what it is? I don't know. It was just never shown. So, that could have been explained properly. Also, how did we woke up? Did they just magically, you know, open their eyes and, oh, I'm awake. Or, like, Sleeping Beauty style. This is, this is apparently a Sleeping Beauty retail, but I just want to know how they walk, like, wake up, you know? <laughs> they were just told they were awake, so, yeah. Well, uh, through Leah's memories after a time jump, there was quite a time jump, which kind of threw me off, and that's why I was confused. And then, how was the queen able to function after 500 years of sleeping? I mean, wouldn't your body just not be fully functional yet? I don't know. Whatever. Um, and then also, as I said before, what are the changes made after 500 years of sleeping? Again, we never got explained about that. And also, again, how come there's no consequences? So then there's a the whole sorcerer not... Uh, I don't know if I should say this. So, I will just skip that part for now, but ask one question about it, and that is, how was he able to talk to Leah? If you want to know what that means, I suggest it just reading the book, but I'm really curious as to how he was able to talk to Leah. So, yeah. Like, I'm assuming he just spoke through her head. I'm assuming. Or you will see, like, an actual figure just chilling somewhere in the palace. I don't know, but whatever. Um, there's also no chemistry between Mervyn and Leah. To be honest, the whole relationship between Leah and the Saints was just, um, you know, her just trying to find who her state was, even though she believed in Anna, also she thought. Uh, and this is just basically means, like, what fate really means to her. I feel like that was the whole journey of the book. So, but then, also, the whole belief system should have been fleshed out. I think the belief system was quite interesting, but it should have been more in-depth explanation. But as well as the magic system not being explained and the historical facts. But the reveal came too late and it got frustrated. I think the reveal should have been before the second half of the book, at least. Uh, and so, Le I think Leia still wasn't good at her wine and tried to please her gods after losing fate. Um, so, I, even though she was annoying, but I still think she wasn't good at her wine because of that. She basically stood her ground and fought for what she believed in. And so, um, you know, after once, I guess her fate came along again. And then the ending was rushed and unsatisfied, and I think it should have been more fleshed out. Because the ending, I didn't really like the ending, it was just like, kind of like an ugly ending. So, it could have been better. But, um, that is my two stars round. Yay! We love that. So, my next book is Beyond the Black Door by A.M. Strickland. Kamai was one never to open the black door, but she didn't listen. Everyone has a soul, some are beautiful gardens, others are frightening dungeons. Soul walkers like Kamai and her mother can journey into other people's soul while they sleep. But no matter what Kamai lives as she sees the black door, it follows her into every soul and her mother has told her to never ever open it. I gave this a 3 stars even though I also went off in a rant. <laughs> I was really intrigued by the black door and soul walking. I thought soul walking was really cool and intriguing idea for magic, but when she opened the door, it wasn't quite what I expected it to be. The two main characters honestly reminded me from Carnival. I'm pretty sure the Carnival are uh, Jack and Scarlet. I'm pretty sure that's what their names are. So it did remind me a lot of that, um, with how they interacted and like the whole dialogue. God is gracious, the dialogue was something else. Um, the story was also repetitive, and in the dialogue, they had nothing of value. 
The long blade can have been better and fleshed out since we know nothing about it. There is no chemistry between the two main characters and the... Honestly, I didn't mind the writing. I thought it was really great. But the book dragged on. It should have been shorter. It really should have. Because about a few chapters um, towards the end, I was just done. So, like, just end the story already. <laughs> so, yeah, for the male main character, I completely forgot his name. Oh well, he's not that important. <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, he was kind of creepy, but not in a good way. And so, he was, I don't know, he was just really creepy, manipulative. And possessive, also when he took her hand and then he licked Kamali's hand. That was kind of weird. I don't know why he did it, but okay. Um, the plot twists are all alright and they could have been better. The book also had a lot of telling and, sho and not showing, which ended up having the book dragging because of it. Like, there was so much telling. Like, we didn't need all of that. We really didn't, so it could have been cut off better. And then there were also a whole bunch of infant dumps which were also annoying. The phasing was too fast and the world building was dumped quite quickly with new elements along the way. I think that's what made the world building kind of flat because of that. So we didn't really get much to see the world building being, you know, get explained properly. So that was just a constant thing one after another. So yeah. My next book is Kingdom of Swords by Orlando Bevan. And girl with no gifts must bargain for the power to fight her own mother's dark schemes, even if the price is her life. I gave this at 3 stars. I found the book to be confusing as well as slow. I did like the second half of the book as, as that's when things got picked up. I didn't like how Otto blamed Ludric for not seeing through the skies of her sister. It was gross as how Otto called him a cheater even though he was a victim, and if you know what I mean, you know, the odd word, the rapist, I'm pretty sure I can't say it on YouTube, but just to give you guys more context, but it was kind of gross how I just treated him flat out. It's like, it's not his fault, he can't see through the disguise, so honestly, that part was really gross, and Anna should have not treated him that way, for he truly didn't know, so it was just gross calling him a cheater, even though he was a victim. Yeah, I did not like that at all. And also, the book shouldn't have to be this long as well, since it did drag it up for quite a bit. And there was also a lot of info dumping. The book also is, you know, heavy-handed, um, you know, just like heavy-handed with twists that were at the end, and the ending was okay. It wasn't the greatest, but it could have been better. My next book is God Enough to Curse by Katie Rose Poole. Marla Briggs reluctantly pretends to be in love with one of the most powerful nobles in Kalaza City to gain an entry into the illustrious and deadly society that holds close to her mother's disappearance. And I gave this a 3.5 stars. There seems to be a pattern. <laughs> so for the most part, it was entertaining. It really was entertaining. A while, it did seem to drag in the middle. I didn't really see much of the world building, and half of it was... I didn't care as to what happened in the book. The magic system was pretty cool with how they were able to pick up a card and do a hex with it. Like, they have, like, all these fancy cards, and all those cards have, like, different things they can do with it. They can curse, hex, whatever. I, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I'm, so I kind of wish it was a little bit more expanded on the magic system just because it really was quite intriguing. Um, it's also the one part of the magic system it was that there was spell casting for wizards to carry wands. I'm a little bit confused about that, so that wasn't really much expanded. I wish it was, but we didn't really get enough information. Also, the political, the political side was tricky, but the characters needed more depth to them. I honestly think the book was actually too short, in my opinion, just because I feel like I didn't get enough stories of the character themselves. So maybe in the sequel, being, maybe the author would actually drag the characters' maps more. But I don't think I'll be reading the sequel. I don't know, maybe it's up in the air. 
If I will, I'll probably do it as an audio book. And my final book is The Lighthouse Witches by C.J. Cook. Two sisters go missing on a remote Scottish island 20 years later. One is about found, but she's still the same age as when she disappeared. So I gave this a 2.5 stars. Um, I, so I gave this a 3 stars. The setting was interesting and atmospheric, being sent in a lighthouse and in a remote Scottish island. At least that's what it is. Well, I honestly thought the story was okay. It could have been better and more developed. I think the book should have stuck with one topic genre. Uh, it was kind of cool to see magic and folklore, but I don't think it would have worked for a thriller. And I think, and honestly, half the time I was bored, so I think the author should have just stuck with the thriller, in all honesty. Um, Towards the end, uh, things kept dragging on, and there's some things that had a loose ends, like how the McCullen wasn't really shown as to what happened to him. We were just told as to what happened to him, so I kind of wished we were just shown, but um, that never was, so I don't know what happened. Uh, and, well, we, we didn't know what happened because we were, got told, but we were just never shown. And I did like the setting, the lighthouse, the cave limbers, um, and the timeline, and the never count, and the characters' narrations kind of got confusing and it jumped too much. I think that what really threw me off was because there was just so much jumping around between the characters and the timelines. It honestly just kind of made me be more confused. But I think it was an okay story. It could have been better, but it was just okay. I know all the books I read in September, so it's not too shabby. I think it did pretty well. It would have been nice if I had finished my TBR, but oh well. Um, as you guys see, Buckleweed is being currently filming right now. So I'm excited. I think I'm about maybe more than halfway done with my filming. Wow. Okay, I was busy. <laughs> But anyways, uh, let me know how much you guys have read in September and what books. And please like, comment, subscribe to let me know if I ever time I post. And I'll see you on my next one. Bye bye!